Hello, good evening everyone. It's Tanya from Tanya Krause Horsemanship here and tonight you are joining me for Wednesday Night Live. Uh, I'm really happy to be here with you tonight. Uh, it's been a few weeks since we since I did the last uh, Wednesday Night Live and it is our new time slot. So I'm really um, happy for you to be joining me in the new time slot and uh, I should be fairly back to normal now. I am at a um, reasonable uh, series of clinics coming up that are all fairly local. Hi Amanda, thanks for joining. Um, that are all fairly local or at least in areas that have good Wi-Fi and things like, you know, in bigger cities in the Gold Coast and places like that. So fingers crossed I'm back on board. Wednesday Night Live should be absolutely um, as normal from 7 o'clock every Wednesday night Australian Eastern Standard Time. Hi Liz, thanks for joining and uh, I'm, I'm really keen for you guys to send your suggestions through of what you would like to see me talk about. This show is for you, that's why I do it. People send me suggestions and things like that all the time so I definitely want you guys to um, let me know what you'd love to see me to talk about because that's the whole point of the show. So um, I have not been able to join you in the last couple of weeks because I have been in the Northern Territory and before I left I wasn't sure whether I would be able to get um, service out, um, cell reception out there. Hi Ruth, hey Leah. And I, as it turns out I had absolutely no cell service and the Wi-Fi was intermittent, it went in and out all the time. It definitely wasn't reliable enough or strong enough to um, bring to you the Wednesday Night Live. So we had to um, put that on the back burner unfortunately and uh, I've been out there on one of Australia's biggest cattle stations for a few weeks working with the horses out there. Um, it was a massive adventure and I did have a lot of fun so um, I, I'm looking forward to sharing what I learned out there with all of you guys as we go through uh, different clinics and all that sort of stuff and my newsletter and my articles are obviously going to reflect everything that I picked up out there. Uh, I had a really good time. So um, that brings me to tonight's topic of maintaining a citizen and uh, why the small stuff makes a huge difference. Now I, um, some of you may be shocked uh, to hear that um, tonight's episode was inspired by my horse Cooper. Those of you that come to, to clinics with me know that he's um, my demo horse. He's my longest standing uh, demo horse and um, you'll be shocked to know that he's not perfect all the time and so tonight's um, Tonight's show is is inspired by his behavior. Unfortunately, he's not so great behavior um, So hello everyone who's joining I can see the comments and things like that But it does roll pretty quickly and I don't get to say hello to everyone. So I really appreciate you joining me uh, so yeah tonight's uh, why the small stuff makes a huge difference and how we can maintain a citizen so um, my series of building a citizen is on my YouTube channel and that um, shares with you the training tips and videos and the things that are the elements that I believe make up a horse that I call a citizen horse. Um, so this is a horse that's quite easy to handle, um, you know, it, it's quite easy going, happy to be patient, happy to stand still and get rugged and doesn't push you over for feed and doesn't tread on your toes and gets their feet done and, and happily stands there to get washed and all, you know, worming and needling and all of those um you know day-to-day -day things that we have to do with our horses and um, both in their care and um, maybe some veterinary requirements and things like that uh, so for me having a citizen is having a horse that all of those things are really easy um, to do with and the horse is very respectful and patient during those um, processes and it does uh, we we talk about it a lot as being reflected in the ridden horse and um, I share it a lot at my clinics and definitely at the cult starting clinic. I've got one coming up in July. You know, we talk about how those building a citizenship exercises have a reflection on how your horse is going to be under saddle. And, you know, sometimes we don't 
really make a correlation between well my horse doesn't like being shampooed or washed or hosed so you know what difference does that make under saddle but um, what what we're establishing when we're working with our horses is we're establishing patterns so if my horse gets to fidget while they're being hosed because they don't like it or they're impatient or you know whatever their their feelings are then that is building a pattern of behavior in that horse so my horse gets to they don't think well I play up while I'm getting hosed so I'm gonna play up under saddle but what they understand to be true is I get to play up when I'm uncomfortable or I get to play up when I'm impatient or I get to play up when I don't like something and so as soon as we establish that pattern in them then it starts to show up in other areas so there's definitely a huge correlation between our citizenship work and how our horses are when we're handling them on the ground obviously when we are trying to do the citizen things with them when we might be trying to train them something new and in our ridden skills it's all related it all shows up you know one of my mentors um, you know I, I would hear him often say um, you know crossing a river if you if you if I can get my horse in the in the water comfortably then my float loading or trailer loading is going to be easier if I can get my horse on the trailer then my trail riding is going to be easier if I can get my horse happy on the beach then my arena work is going to be easier so everything correlates everything overlaps everything um, you know has an effect on each other so first of all I'll share with you the story of Cooper and how he came to inspire this um, Wednesday Night Live episode of um, Maintaining a Citizen. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Cooper is about nine years old and, um, you know, he's been with me since he was 18 months old and he's generally very well mannered, very respectful, pretty happy to do most things. And I'm very embarrassed to say that today when he was getting his feet done, um, he was not any of those things and he was an absolute pain in the neck um, and he was very very naughty to say the least so um, he he kind of you know he was fine with getting them trimmed and he was fine with um, uh, you know even the, uh, the Cooper has terrible feet and so he's in um, rehabilitative work so he um, some of the stuff that has to be done to his feet is what we were doing today was we were putting glue soles into his feet um, and to, to be able to do that process you have to get the feet very clean you have to get the feet filed back and you have to get the feet very dry so the process is that you have to use an angle grinder on the feet and this is done by a professional it's not done by me um, you know so don't I don't need a million messages telling me that I'm crazy to use an angle grinder on my feet this is done by a professional person and uh, and and with the utmost care and professionalism so it's all fine and uh, you know so he's he was fine with getting filed he was fine with getting the angle grinder done on his feet he was even fine as we started to dry his feet which is done with a heat gun so you know it's quite warm on his feet you're trying to dry them out to get all the moisture out of there so the glue can stick and do its job in protecting his soles because otherwise he can't walk on a you know a bitumen road so we're doing all this stuff and he's fine and he's fine and he's fine we get to the point of, of um, gluing the putting the glue in his feet and the glue is a um, is a two-part glue so you put two different glues together using a um, a glue gun and uh, the, as though as that process mix the glue does start to warm up now it's not terribly hot it's not burning him or anything like that but he would feel it in his feet but bear in mind that he has just um, had a had a uh, glue uh, a dryer on his feet but it's not a dryer I just a heat gun he's just had a heat gun on his feet and he's been absolutely fine with it and uh, as as we have to wait for the glue to dry we have to hold his foot up in the air and it has to be held up for you know sometimes it's two minutes sometimes it's three sometimes it's four today was one of the days that it was a little bit longer because uh, it was quite cold outside it actually looked like it was about to rain and so the glue takes longer to set you have to hold it up so he doesn't ruin the glue so he stands there for a little bit and and of course he's already had the application and and all that stuff happen and so he's standing there and he's got his foot up in the air and then he decides I'm not having this I'm, I don't want to stand here with my foot any um, up anymore 
and uh, he has some pretty good techniques. He's it, This horse has been a troubled horse when it comes to his feet from the time he was 18 months old. Um, he's always had really tender feet. He's always need rehabilitative type work. We've done the shoeing. Nailing shoes on his feet is, is something like, you know, out of a Western movie. He does not appreciate it at all, although we can get him to a place where he is accepting of it when he's had training, and I'm going to talk about that. That's obviously the whole reason for this. Uh, so, you know, he, he's got some pretty good techniques when it comes to avoiding or pulling his foot away. So he starts to try and pull his foot away and then he starts to bring his back feet right underneath him and rear up in front so he can pull his foot away and etc, etc. And, and, you know, um, my, my hoof care professional does a great job in holding it, holding it. No, he's not getting away. No, he's not getting away. No, he's not getting away. We're almost done. The glue's almost set and he snatches it away. And so we're both unhappy. Obviously, the process takes so long and it's got to be really clean and pristine and dry and all that. And he's just put his foot uh, in the grass. And um, so... After, because on this particular foot, the first foot that he did it with, he what you do after the glue sets is you put a nappy over the foot, like a child's nappy, because a nappy stops moisture coming up and affecting the glue. Because the glue, once it's set, after about four minutes, you still don't want to get it wet after that. So uh, you've, he had it, now luckily for this one, he had a nappy on his foot. So when the foot hit the ground, he didn't do much damage to the glue and it, and it was all in there okay, not a problem, we'll move on. Well, immediately after he got his foot on the ground, um, he had a, a long pee. And uh, so both of us went, oh, he needed to pee, you know, okay, fair enough. Um, when you've got an experienced horse that has learnt patience and respect, obviously I can't tell if a horse is busting for a pee or he just wants to have a pee. I like to think that our um, our mature horses can learn to hold it. Obviously, if you've got their foot up in the air and they can't stretch right out to um, do what they need to do, then they should be able to hold it. And we're really only talking um, a few minutes while the glue sets, but I don't know if he had been holding it for X amount of time. So both of us kind of said, okay, you know, we'll give him that one. No worries. We'll let him have a pee. Let's move on. Let's do the other foot. So let's go back to the same process, angle grinder, cleaning the foot, drying the foot with the heat gun, everything's getting done, getting done, no worries, and we're like, right, you've had a pee, you don't need to pee, let's get this other foot done. And long story short, as, as it so happened, Cooper wasn't having a bar of it, and he got his foot away again and landed on the grass with... Um, with, the, uh, with the glue still wet, unfortunately, and so then we had to go through the whole process again. So um, what I did was, in between that, I took him away and I just lunged him a little bit, did some circles, did some turns and things like that. Not rah, rah, chase, chase, chase. I wasn't trying to punish him. There way too much time had gone from when he put his foot down to when I got him to where I worked him. So it's not about punishing him, but it's just about using his body because he had been standing there for probably an hour or more. Um, and it's just about getting him that little bit like, okay, I've got the ants out of my pants right I now I can stand still so we can finish the job. And that's what we did. And uh, afterwards, it got me to thinking about, you know, as I'm apologizing to um, my hoof care professional who um, I've known for a long time and, and is a friend, thankfully, so, you know, understands, hopefully, and I hope she's not sore. You know, it's really, I, I take very seriously um, the fact that horses can injure these people, and I know that if she gets injured, that she can't work. So, you know, I, I'm not... I'm not one to just laugh and giggle about it and say, oh, well, he played up for the farrier. It's not, it's not a good, you know, it's not a good deal and I don't want him doing that. Um, so, you know, I apologize and everything. And then I said, I, I, I said, you know, um, I don't want him to give, um, I don't want to give him excuses. And I said, after the first one, the P, fair enough. Maybe he was really, really busting. Maybe there was just no way that he could have held it for any longer. So we did a P. And uh, the other excuse that we gave him was he is, he is in re rehabilitative foot care. So, you know, he does have very sore, painful feet. Um, he could feel, he's always been very sensitive. As I said, you can't, 
you know, it, it's a, it takes a lot of effort to nail into his feet, you know, tapping with a hammer and things like that really sets him off. He's very sensitive. He can't walk down a tar road with his feet. That's why he's in this process of getting his feet um, cared for in this way. So, you know, we've got a couple of reasons there. Uh, but the biggest thing I felt that it was, I didn't feel like it was coming from a sensitivity point of view. I actually felt that what it was coming from was a impatience point of view. I think that Cooper held his foot up for two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, whatever it was. And then he decided, you know what? I don't want to hold my foot up anymore. And, and I'm not having a bar of this anymore. So that was the crux of the issue was Cooper didn't have the patience to wait to hold his foot up for an extended period of time. Now, it's something that he, you know, this is like the eighth time that we've done this and the process where we glue shoes and everything onto his feet is way longer. So I know he's more than capable. And so it got me to thinking as to, you know, why today? Why this time? Why is he not having patience? And it got me to thinking about maintaining a citizen and practicing what we expect our horses to do in all the downtime and how everything that we do with our horses has this big reflection on how they behave as a citizen and 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 um you know how they conduct themselves during veterinary care and during hoof care and things like that and cooper has been out of work for at least eight weeks you know i've been um, home for two weeks I was in the territory for three weeks, so that's five. And then I know the two clinics, at least the two clinics before that, I used other horses. So we're sort of going all the way back to the beginning of April. He hasn't been worked since the beginning of April. It's June. So we're talking about eight weeks since Cooper's been caught, handled, brushed. You know, I look after him, obviously. I go out there and check that he's all right and things like that. Um, but it's only been this week that I've started to bring him back into work. So I've caught him a few times and, you know, started doing some um, light ground exercises to try and build his fitness in, in preparation for riding. Um, and so it got me to thinking that, you know, that horse probably hasn't been tied up for long, you know, maybe eight weeks. Um, he's nine years old. He should know how to be tied and he does know how to be tied. Um, and the reason I'm using tying as the example is because he needs a degree of patience to stand patiently when he's tied up. So um, when I think about patience and I think about what exercises help the horse develop those that attribute, one of those major things is being tied. So being tied up to be groomed or rugged or get their feet picked up or to be saddled or anything like that. Um, and that is practicing patience. It's not practicing being tied up. When they're babies and we're teaching them how to tie up, that's a different thing. They're learning to come forward off the rope and all that sort of thing. Once they have the knowledge or the citizenship skill of being tied, then we've got to consider what is my citizenship skill actually creating? What is the point of that particular skill? What is the attribute that that skill is creating? And for, uh, tying up is patience. And so when I caught Cooper this morning, he actually went to the dentist this morning as well, so he's had a really big day. But when I caught him and, and tied him up before we put him on the trailer, I noticed that he was fidgeting and pulling and trying to sort of see if he could undo the rope immediately from being tied up. And uh, I didn't really think anything of it at the time. I just sort of thought, oh, yeah, he's fidgeting. That's a bit unusual for Cooper. And uh, But then upon reflection, after um, his feet, he was so bad, badly behaved with his feet being done, both of those things are a patience issue. So now that I've been able to apply some thought to it, I can start to consider, well, how do we maintain our horse's um, citizenship in our day-to-day -day, um, goings on? And I say it all the time, you know, everything that you do day-to-day -day is probably more important than the training that you specifically go out in your arena, arena and do because it's the day-to-day -day stuff that you're doing repetitively, you're doing um, consistently, and you're doing the same thing all the time. So rugging, feeding, picking up their feet, saddling, um, you know, maybe some, uh, you know, tying them up, worming, all those sorts of things. So the, the three things that I came up with in terms of maintaining a citizen is number one, consistency in handling and training. You guys have heard me talk about this, I don't know how many times, time and time and time again, um, because we have to be consistent, we have to be the same person and have the same rules with our horse every single time we um, 
every single time we uh, use our horse and every single time we're handling our horse. Sorry for the confusion there. I just heard my front door open and there's not supposed to be anyone here. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's the wind. Uh, luckily, I'm on live, but uh, I'm quite sure my dogs aren't barking or anything. So I'm quite sure the wind just blew the door open. Uh, so I was wondering who was coming through my front door. Um, the consistency in handling and training. One of the examples I like to use is if you've got a rule that your horse can't eat or graze while you're online, you have to not let him eat or graze while you're online every single time. It is confusing to a horse and it undoes your training if you have one rule one day and another rule the next day. If you rug your horse at night and, and unrug them in the morning, if you're rugging your horse regularly and sometimes you rug them with their head in the feed bucket and sometimes you rug them with them standing tired and patiently with their head up and you can do all the buckles neatly, you're not building patience or respect or or the horse being aware of where you are because you're just putting the rug on so you've got a horse desensitized to the rug but you don't have a horse that is um being a citizen while he's being rugged so i you know we're all guilty of it we're running late we chuck the feed at them and then we rug them while you know we struggle to get their head out of the feed bucket and we oh i just need to do these couple of buckets up that is building disrespect that is building a pattern in your horse that says to your horse sometimes you can push on me sometimes you can say no because you've got a feed bucket and you don't want to lift your head up out of the feed bucket sometimes you get to um then put your your head back down and push back on me again while i'm trying to do the buckle up because you're trying to scoff your feed so if you start to think about things in terms of patterns you've got to think to yourself what pattern am i am i building here you know am i using this skill um, am I applying? Am I applying consistency in my day-to-day -day habits with my horses? It's probably one of the most overlooked, yet one of the most vital things that we can do to um, help our horse be consistent and help us be consistent in our relationship and understanding of that relationship. The second one is practice. So practicing skills makes them permanent, and sometimes. Sometimes circumstances dictate to you um, whether you're practicing those skills. Sometimes it's, uh, I don't like using the word laziness, but let's use that. Sometimes it's laziest, laziness. Sometimes we're running out of time. Sometimes we just forget. Sometimes whatever. So I'll, con I'll keep using the tying up as an example um, because it's a, it's a patience thing, right? So... Where Cooper is at the moment in his paddock, he I have been doing some ground exercises with him and I've been working my two other horses that are paddocked with him at the same time. So three horses, 15 minutes a day. We're just doing some light ground exercises to bring all three of them back into work. So what I'm doing is I'm going to the paddock. I've, it's in a big 45 acre paddock. I'm turning up. I've got my halter. I'm putting one halter on Cooper, I'm working him for 15 minutes and then I'm letting him go and then I'm putting the same halter on Gally and working her and letting her go and then I'm putting the halter on Squizzy and working her and letting her go. And at the moment, or up until tonight when I had the um, realisation of what I'm building in terms of consistency, I have been thinking to, I have just been doing it that way, using one halter, letting the horses go. So what I'm missing is an opportunity to let the horses experience patience by tying them up while they're waiting for the next horse to get worked. So the paddock that I'm in, it's a big 45 acre paddock. Maybe if there were some trees around, I would have thought about tying them up. Maybe if whatever, whatever, I can think of all the excuses um, under the sun of why I haven't done it. But tomorrow... First thing, I'm going to head down to that paddock and I'm going to take some rope and I'm going to take some um, tools and I'm going to um, find some places that I can tie the horses up. So then I'll take three halters, catch all three horses, tie them all up, work one while two are being tied up and then put him or her back on the tie up and then work the other one, etc., etc. Now, I'm not talking about a patience pole i'm not talking about catching a horse and tying it up for hours on end i don't practice that that's not what i'm doing uh what i'm talking about is 
the horses learning how to be patient, learning how to all be caught. Everyone gets tied up, everyone gets worked and goes back on being tied up until everyone's finished working. Then we all get let off and then the, the session is finished. So if I can um, use those opportunities when they present themselves to me, instead of each horse having only 15 minutes work, each horse is going to have 45 minutes work. They're going to have half an hour on, on being tied up or being patient and they're going to have 15 minutes of physical activity to to bring them back into ground exercises and sometimes that's going to vary you know as they start to develop um you know a bit of cardiovascular a bit of fitness then uh you know the sessions will be a bit longer etc etc so i've got no problem with horses learning how to be patient in that way obviously on big trailer rides they have to be fairly patient they're standing in there for quite some time when we get to the show and we tie them up on the side of the trailer and they might have to wait for an hour or two or three or maybe they're there all day when we're coming to and from classes um, patience is one of those things that really should be practiced all the time but it's also one of those things that I have obviously overlooked and it's something that I know that many people overlook because we sort of go and catch the horse chuck the saddle on and and when we're finished with them we tend to let them go instead of especially if we're only working with one horse um, there's really no reason to tie it up because we're finished and so we go and do whatever it is we're doing and feed them and, and move on to the next thing that we've got on the list. So um, practicing skills is what makes them permanent. So um, that's just a little opportunity that we've got there to be able to practice our skills in terms of uh, across the board. So I believe that as Cooper comes back into work, as I start tying him up and he starts to... Um, practice his patience he already knows how to be patient the horse has been on the road with me for thousands of kilometers and hours and hours of clinics and he's been tied up you know to the fence while i've been working other people's horses that horse knows patience he's just not currently skilled in patience because it's he's out of practice um so what i want to do is what i'm going to do is start tying him up so he can practice patience while i'm doing something i don't leave him unattended don't think that I'm advocating tying horses up for an hour to break their spirit or anything like that. That is not what I'm talking about. There's a boundary. Um, what I'm talking about is him being able to be tied up, practice patience, and I think that's going to be reflected next time he gets his feet done. I think he's going to be a lot more willing and a lot more patient about holding those feet up for that extended period of time. I can obviously also work with his feet and start to teach him to hold them up for that extended period of time. But the core skill that we're working on is patience. It's not, you know, he's got no problem picking his feet up. Uh, the third thing is recognizing when you aren't keeping on top of it. So for me today, it was that light bulb moment. And sometimes we walk away from a session like that and we go, oh, my horse was an idiot today. Um, oh, you know, I can't believe he did that to the hoof trimmer. And, and uh, oh, I don't know what was wrong with him. And then I come inside and start making dinner and I don't think any more of it. Well, I'm an overthinker. I like to analyze things a lot. That's why I get to present all of these um, things to you guys because I'm quite methodical in my thinking. So especially with a horse like Cooper, you know, who, who I know is old enough to know better, I've got to think to myself, why? Why why today? Why didn't this work for me? And that's what got me thinking, well, what was the real reason? It wasn't his feet being picked up. He stood there to get them angle grinded, for goodness sake. It had nothing to do with the fact that he had his leg up in the air. It was the patience. It was the length of time. So then that led me on the thought process that has inspired this entire video. So... Um, recognizing when you aren't keeping on top of it so when you do have those little experiences where your horse maybe does act in a not so fantastic um way and he has bad behavior or undesirable behavior or whatever it is what core skill can you link back to that you know what reason and i'm not talking about excuses i'm talking about recognizing what the core skill is so in my case it was patience i'm talking about recognizing what that was and then finding a pathway that you can say to yourself well hmm patience okay this is why he doesn't have patience currently this is some of the things i can do to help him have more patience so it's about thinking a little bit beyond Oh, my horse was a, you know, he was a pain today for the hoof trimmer. Oh, he better be, be better. He better be better next time. Or thinking to yourself, 
I'm going to have to um, teach this horse to pick up his feet again because he doesn't know how to pick up his feet. It had nothing to do with his feet at all. It had to do with the patience. So uh, I think recognising that as well. It may be a young horse that you may um, be working with and maybe they are learning how to pick up their feet. It's about us being able to recognise what stage of citizenship are they in. Are they learning? Are you building one? Or are you in maintaining? Should they be maintaining their citizenship? So um, they're the three main points that I that I came to today in terms of maintaining a citizen. So number one, consistency in handling and training. Number two, allowing the horse or, or providing opportunities to the horse to build or um, maintain those citizenship skills. And what, you know, recognizing what um, attributes you're talking about, patience, confidence, those kind of things. What What is the core skill? Not, I want my horse to do this for this person. What is the core skill that's actually involved there or the attribute that you're looking for? And number three is recognizing when you aren't on top of it and coming up with opportunities to help you slip it into your everyday um, everyday handling and everyday life. So I've, uh, as I just shared with you, I've already thought of mine. I know what I'm gonna, um, what steps I'm going to take to help Cooper be more patient, um, and it's not going to add any more time to my schedule um, whatsoever because it's 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 just going to come into my normal training schedule. So um, I hope that helps you guys. I hope you enjoyed tonight's Wednesday Night Live. Once again, thank you so much for joining me on the new time slot. Um, I really appreciate you being here. I'm really looking forward to um, being really consistent. Uh, please send your suggestions through. I'm always after new topics. This show is for you. I don't sit here and talk to this for me. Uh, I've got all the notes. Um, I, you know, I build the curriculums and things like that. I'm, I'm here to share it with you guys, and that's what I'm really passionate about. So please send me any suggestions of topics that you would like to see me talk about, and I will do my best to get them on the um, on the show lineup on the programs. And uh, for those of you, I know that there's been a few people asking me about my new little edition, Winnie. And uh, I just wanted to share with you, uh, she's a sick little kitten that, um, you know, if you guys head to my Facebook page, you'll see her story. So I've only had her for a couple of days, um, but she she was yesterday, she couldn't even pick her head up. She was very, very limp and uh, she couldn't move those feet. So you can see, <laughs> darling, you can see that she's, um, she's very, very, looking very good. I'm quite happy with her progress within 24 hours. She's, um, She's starting to be able to lift her own little head up and she's starting to push herself around with those back legs. So I'm really looking forward to uh, sharing that uh, recovery with you and I hope it should only be a few days. She's on pretty hard, hardcore antibiotics for a big infection that she's got. Uh, so thanks for everyone who's been sending inquiries about Winnie. This is her and uh, no doubt you're probably going to see more of her on Wednesday Night Lives because uh, she doesn't leave me alone. She obviously... Um, was I don't know how she came to be where, where I found her, um, but she seems to be straight off her mum. She's only about five weeks old, so uh, she thinks I'm her new mum. So she doesn't like to leave my side, so I'm quite sure she's going to be doing Wednesday Night Lives with me from here on in. Uh, Karen saying, thanks, Tanya. Great topic. Really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate the feedback. And uh, please send your suggestions through. I hope you're all having a fantastic week. Um, and I look forward to catching up with you all really, really soon. Talk to you later.